Hey there, thanks for tuning in. If you're watching this video, you're probably thinking about going to Bryce Canyon National Park, and let me tell you, that's a good choice. So in this video, we want to give you all the planning essentials that you're gonna need for your trip. We just went to Bryce Canyon again this year. We've been going to Bryce Canyon our, our whole lives, pretty much. And uh, so we wanna give you all the resources that you need in one video so you're not having to bounce all over together. We're Matt and Cheryl, and our channel is We're in the Rockies, and our whole purpose is to make traveling easy for people. We want you to come to the West and enjoy your trip, whether you're in a city or a national park. We are both educators. Matt has been teaching night classes at the local university, and I've been a special education teacher for a long time. And we love sharing our homeland with others. We think that everyone should travel to the West, but especially to Bryce Canyon. Also, just to help you plan your trip to make things a little easier, we have a website, We're in the Rockies, that has a lot of resources and a guide that's already prepared and an audio guide. So check that out if you're interested. But for right now, grab your pen and pencil and let's get started talking about Bryce. Okay, so let's talk about why visit Bryce Canyon. Uh, in short, it's the most visually stunning canyon that we've seen. It's actually part of a, a larger area that is a, a huge outdoor playground. So there are so many things to do around Bryce Canyon. So don't think of it as just Bryce Canyon, but wow, there's so much stunning beauty in Southern Utah all around Bryce Canyon that makes it worth it. Um, also, there's activities like horseback riding and ATVing and biking. It's a great family destination. I think a lot of times Bryce Canyon will take a back seat to some of the neighboring national parks, but I wanted to tell you a little story just to emphasize how stunning Bryce Canyon is. When Matt and I first got married almost 20 years ago, we went on a family trip with the in-laws to the Grand Canyon, which I had never been to before. And after staring out in that vast canyon, they said, well, what do you give it? What do you rate it? And I said, well, I give it an eight. And it was a gasp of horror from everyone there how can you rate the Grand Canyon an eight? And I said, well, because Bryce Canyon is a 10 and it's my favorite. And so even though the Grand Canyon is incredible, I do reserve my, my 10 for Bryce Canyon. <laughs> and actually it's kind of common for a lot of people to like Bryce Canyon as their favorite park, their favorite national park in Utah. Utah has five national parks. A lot of people say it's their favorite. Okay, so let's talk about what Bryce Canyon is famous for. What is it? Uh, well, it's the largest collection of hoodoos in the world. So a hoodoo is basically just a rock jutting out of the ground, kind of like a tower. And these at Bryce Canyon are red rock towers all over the place. And they're concentrated in what is called the Bryce Canyon Amphitheater. So it's called an amphitheater because it really does look like a semicircle. It looks like you're sitting in the theater of a movie and it's rounded like that and they're tapered down. And so what you're looking at there, when you visit Bryce, you're standing on the edge of the canyon looking down into the amphitheater of these, of these hoodoos. As I mentioned, it's the smallest park of the five national parks in Utah, but really probably packs the biggest punch. And again, a lot of people, in fact, I looked it up online one time, the, the Google <laughs> ratings, and Zion in the Grand Canyon had a rating of 4.8, an average rating of 4.8. Bryce 4.9 and it didn't surprise <laughs> me actually so well and one of my very favorite things about Bryce too is how accessible it is if you you know I love to hike and I think a lot of you that are visiting these parks are ready to do a little bit of hiking but if you're trying to do any sort of hiking at the Grand Canyon it is brutal you've got to be in pretty good shape to do some hiking at the Grand Canyon and same for a lot of the famous hikes at Zion but hiking into the hoodoos I mean, it can be a little challenging, but I would say far easier. The other thing that's nice about Bryce is that it is higher elevation than Zion in the Grand Canyon. So if you're going in the summer months where, you know, most of us have to travel in the summer, you get a nice reprieve from the heat at Bryce Canyon. Yeah, the hikes are famous and really endlessly interesting. And then finally, it's part of Canyon Country. So as I mentioned, it's kind of close to Zion Canyon and the Grand Canyon. Uh, in the whole area, the whole region, they call Canyon Country. And just outside of, right outside of Bryce, it's next to so many amazing formations and just some really stunning vistas, so. And Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Thunder Mountain Railroad at Disneyland themed after Bryce Canyon? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Maybe that's why I love that ride so much. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, it looks just like it. 
Um, so it's just really remote, rugged country. I mean, it is really out there. Southern Utah is really out there and uh, just, just an amazing place. Now it's part of what's called the Grand Staircase. The Grand Staircase is a geological formation that is like layers of red rock all through Utah and Arizona. And Bryce Canyon actually sits at the very top of the Grand Staircase and then Zion is next and the Grand Canyon is at the bottom of the Grand Staircase. So the layers that you see between the parks are not the same layers, uh, but they're all part of the same formation called the Grand Staircase. These parks are actually also connected tourism wise. So all three of them are very remote. Grand Canyon, Zion and Bryce are really remote, particularly the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. And there were no roads or railroads or anything like that going through that area until about the early 1900s. And so these parks didn't become national parks until then they were just so far out there, nobody could really get to them. But in an effort to get tourism to the area, they made all three, well, they made Zion and Bryce National Parks, Grand Canyon already was, but they, they included the North in there, and then they, they linked them together with roads. And, that, and, and even today, when people travel there, they still typically hit Zion, Bryce, and the Grand Canyon as a loop. They call it the Grand Circle Tour. We've done guides for each of those parks but we're currently working on a guide that connects them all because it's not like there's nothing to see in between each of these parks. Yeah, there's really cool things it's, to see between them. Oh, I, that's the incredible thing about Utah. I seriously was thinking about it today and how grateful I am to be a Utah and be live in the state where all these parks are because if they were, if some of these places that are in between Zion and Bryce or anywhere else, they would be national parks, but yeah. you can't make the entire state a national park. So some yeah. kind of hidden gems along that, that route. Utah has five national parks. They're often called the Mighty Five, and that's another road trip that people do is they'll hit all five Utah national parks in one swoop. So almost universally, people visit Bryce in conjunction with these other parks, and that's because it's, it's really remote. Um, so they're usually hitting them all on a, on a big road trip. Um, so where applicable, we'll give you suggestions for, uh, those for, for road trips, if you're road tripping. Okay. So I think that one of the challenges people come across when they visit Bryce is, well, what do I do besides look at the hoodoos? So we have a few ideas for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So obviously the first thing and probably the thing you must do is to actually look at those hoodoos. And, and I would recommend doing more than just looking at them from the rim of the canyon, but doing a hike into the hoodoos. Yeah, you have to get into the canyon for sure to get the most out of it because it's just amazing that you can actually just hike down in there. There's all these trails going through the hoodoos. It's incredible. Um, there's also something called the Bryce Canyon Scenic Drive. So I didn't really make this clear earlier, but Bryce Canyon is technically not a canyon. It's a plateau and then it just falls off. And um, so it's, it's actually about 18 miles scenic drive and you're really driving along the edge of the plateau. And so everything to the one side is just kind of falling off and there's hoodoos left behind. And so there's a scenic drive that you can go on with, with seven different overlooks. And then seeing a sunrise over Bryce Canyon is one of the treasures. One of the things you absolutely have to do, even if you're not one who likes to get up early, we definitely recommend seeing a sunrise over Bryce Canyon because it's more than just seeing the sunrise on the horizon. It, it hits the hoodoos and casts shades on the wall and it's really pretty spectacular sunrise. Yes, and I was just going to say, I, after our road tripping this summer, I got this blanket that just reminded me of the beautiful red rocks of, of Bryce Canyon and Zion. And I just, I love it. It's soft and it makes me think about those trips. So sometimes the best souvenirs are not always the things you buy on your trip, but things that remind you of it. Right outside of the park is Bryce Canyon City. So this is just kind of a little tourism city that's set up right outside of the park to cater to the visitors. But they have a rodeo and they have a dinner show, uh, a dinner music show, country, country music. There's really a lot of family things to do there. And then there's adventure and exploration. So there's horseback rides you can actually do a horseback ride into Bryce Canyon which I highly recommend and you did that last did, it, did yeah. it this last year and it was fantastic it was amazing um, you can also ride four-wheelers now you can't ride them in Bryce Canyon National Park but nearby you can ride oh, them. there's tons of trails miles and, and miles, miles of ATV trails in the area yeah famous famous rides Biking, oh. rent bikes or e-bikes. 
That was like my, that was my bucket list thing I had to do going to Bryce this year. Is I, whenever we would drive into the park, I'd see this amazing bike trail heading into it. And then I would notice in the canyon, also the bike trail there. Mm -hmm. when, so we ended up renting e-bikes mm -hmm. and it was incredible. We did 30 miles and we didn't even get all the way into the, the canyon because we, we went the other way to Red Canyon, which is also an incredible mm -hmm. spot right mm -hmm. by Bryce Canyon. You ought to check out. But yeah, the... The bike trail is nicely paved, just beautiful, beautiful scenery. So much fun. Yeah, there's also mountain biking, real famous mountain biking trails around there. You can do helicopter tours over the canyon, just like the Grand Canyon. You can do helicopter tours over Bryce. Um, and then she mentioned, Cheryl mentioned Red Canyon, which is nearby. And then another formation or another national monument called Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. This is a much larger, sprawling, National Monument, but there's some specific activities that you can do there that are close to Bryce that are amazing. And there's one more we left off our list, stargazing. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Thank we, you. Yes, there are, um, the Rangers do stargazing programs where you can go get your ticket in advance and they're not expensive, what, like a dollar? Or, yeah, I think just for the Yeah, you know, they, they just want you to commit to coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but Bryce Canyon is one of the few dark sky areas where you can go out and see the stars and it's really incredible. And they even did that throughout COVID. They made their star party work. And I, I just wanted to give a thumbs up to those rangers and that incredible experience. And if you're going and you like stars, you ought to check it out too. Yep. As I mentioned, Bryce Canyon really in a remote area, some of the best air quality and uh, star um, <laughs> visibility at night. You can see the Milky Way. There's you, do a Google search, you'll see all these images of the Milky Way from Bryce Canyon. Really cool. And it does not cost a dollar, it was free. Sorry, I've, I've forgotten. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just had to you go get your ticket in advance at the visitor center. Yeah. And don't worry, Bryce Canyon is so small that it's not hard to find the visitor center. I know. You've got this. Yep, only yep. one. <laughs> only one. Only one visitor center there. Okay, let's talk about how to get there. So I mentioned it's really remote. And so let me give you an idea here. Uh, it's four hours away from Las Vegas. So most people, I believe, would be flying into Las Vegas and doing this Grand Circle tour with Zion and Bryce in the Grand Canyon. It's, it's Zion is about two hours away from Las Vegas, and then Bryce is another two hours. So four hours away from Las Vegas. Four hours away from Salt Lake City if you fly into there. Four hours away from Arches National Park if you're doing that Mighty Five tour through Utah. I, I have talked to some people who... Somehow they got to Arches and then they went down to Las Vegas. But again, four hours from there. So it's also three hours from the Grand Canyon North Rim and five hours from the Grand Canyon South Rim. So it's just out there a long, a long ways. So, But so worth the drive. But worth the drive. And that's the great thing is that it's visited by fewer people because of that. So you're you're ahead of the game if you're going out for sure. And, and our guide has an audio guide with it. So we have some interesting stories for you to listen to while you're making the drive. So definitely check that out. Okay, so let's talk about where to stay when you visit Bryce Canyon. Um, first of all, the prices are pretty reasonable there. Um, again, it's not so touristy that they just jack it up. So you'll be able to find a, a wide variety of accommodations there for you. So we suggest staying in the park or near the park in Bryce Canyon City or right around there because of the sunrise actually we want you to be able to wake up early and see the sunrise um, a lot of people will try to hit it um, they'll try to stay in between Zion and Bryce at a place like Cedar City or maybe Kanab Utah and then they'll they'll just use that as their home base as a jumping off for both parks so that's doable uh, we've written a whole blog post about how to do that that's doable but we'd probably say stay near the park if you can to get the most out of your experience and the thing with bryce too as not said it's not super crowded and so if you're not right within the park it's not that big of a deal The i have not seen big lines of cars lined up for 30 minutes to get into the park no it's not like that at all no. and in not fact like the other parks no 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 and then there's great accommodations immediately outside of the park i mean three minute drive from the park. Right. So so it's not like some of these other bigger parks where you're gonna have to drive an hour to even reach the gate and then drive into the park for a long time. Bryce Canyon is small and and then just accommodations are right outside of the park. So yes, it is nice to stay inside the park and it is beautiful. We've done both, but staying yep. outside the park, 
not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. So inside the park, there are only three places to stay. There's the Bryce Canyon Lodge, which um, is about 100 years old. So some of these national park lodges, they don't have a lot of accommodations. It's more about the experience and the rustic feel. So I like, don't know if they have television. There. They're not big on AC and TV. Yeah. yeah or microwaves in a lot of cases. <laughs> Right. But the advantage is you're staying right there by the canyon rim, so you can just wake up in the morning and walk right out. They have a restaurant and everything there, too. And then they have two campgrounds in the park, just called the North and South Campgrounds. That's We've stayed there a couple of times, and, and they're great. Again, they're just within walking distance of the canyon rim. So so those are good, and their national park campgrounds are always really affordable. They're, they're very inexpensive. Then I mentioned Bryce Canyon City sits right outside of the entrance to the park. So oh, How early can you get... A reservation for the campgrounds. Do you know? I don't know. Usually it's six months in advance, but I don't know about that. And I don't know that Bryce would book up either. Or it probably books up, but maybe not as far in advance as these other places. Yeah, I would say if you're planning, you know you're going to go. I'd say around that six month time frame, get on the National Parks website, get your campground reservation just to make sure you can get that. Because I don't believe the Bryce campgrounds are incredibly large like some of the other. Parts yeah, and I'm so, not sure how many they have. but they are they are nice places to camp. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, right outside in Bryce Canyon City is some camping as well. So the famous place to stay is Ruby's Inn. Ruby's Inn is a resort. So it's got hotel rooms, it's got camping and RV sites and teepees and group tent sites. It's got pools. They do all these tours. Um, these ATV and horse back riding tours and helicopter tours. Like it's a full fledged resort. They really are. Ruby's Inn is synonymous with Bryce Canyon because Ruby, Ruben Surrett, who's who established the the hotel, set it up like the year it became a national park. And so has just been there since the very beginning. And so uh, Ruby's Inn is like the famous place to stay, but there are plenty of other places in Bryce Canyon City and around there. There's a little city that's right by Bryce Canyon City called Tropic. It's about 10 or 15 minutes away. Kind of a funny name, Tropic, for, for being in Southern Utah. <laughs> it's like desolate <laughs> and they call it Tropic. <laughs> I actually did name it because it's warm there. Like the Tropic is what they say, but like it gets snow in the winter. It's kind of a funny name. But uh, a couple of places there are Stone Canyon Inn and Happy Trails B&B. But again, I'll put a link to our, our resource for where to stay in our in the description here and then there's another cute little town about 30 minutes away from bryce and it's called panguage and so i, I found this bnb there called the panguage house which looks amazing and panguage really is this, this charming little town and they do a quilt walk and a balloon festival every every year every june i think and so uh, a lot of people like to stay at panguage oh and in october they line the streets with scarecrows that's parawan oh Yep. <laughs> so <What? laughs> Parawan is, is another cute little town around there actually too. Um, and then, as I mentioned, a lot of people will stay in Cedar City or Kanab so that they can use that as a jumping off point for Bryce or Zion. Some people even stay in St. George, which is much closer to Zion Canyon, um, but is a bigger city and has more amenities. Okay, that's enough on, on where to stay. So let's talk about where to eat. Um, the general feeling here is that the food is pretty bad around Bryce Canyon. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. not. It's not for you foodies. No, no. <laughs> this is out. It, the one, funny thing is, there's one town in the middle of Utah. It's about maybe two hours away from Bryce, I think, and it's called Boulder, Utah, and that is like a foodie town. That is a really. It's been featured in the New York Times, New Yorker, stuff like that. That is a foodie town. I know. I to think about. It, I I don't recall ever eating a meal at a restaurant in Bryce. Yeah, we are usually camping, and so we usually yeah. just cook our own meals. Um, there are here are a couple of favorites, though. I'll give you if you're taking notes. Uh, Bryce Canyon Pines Restaurant is a local favorite, and then Bryce Canyon Lodge does get good reviews as well. So the lodge that's inside the park that is run by actually I'm not sure who it's run by. I don't think it's run by Zantara, but. Uh, anyway, that one did gets gets good reviews, and then there's a little place in Tropic called. IDK barbecue. Which <laughs> sounds like I don't know barbecue, but it, it's a popular place. People like the barbecue there. Uh, I, I wrote down on my notes here not to order fish. So I, <laughs> I read a lot of reviews online where people complained about the fish that they ordered. And I thought, remember how I told you you're four hours away from any major city? <laughs> 
the fish is probably not what you want to order in this part of the country. Well, and, and Utah is just really not known for its seafood. No. 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 <laughs> no. The only body of water, water here we have is the Great Salt Lake, which has brine shrimp, if that tells you anything. Well, a lot of Utahns <laughs> hate fish, and it's because all we've ever tried is trout. <laughs> so we're not we're not yeah. very cultured on the seafood no. but but i was thinking that maybe next time we go to bryce we should eat at some of these restaurants so we can give our opinion of course. might be kind of fun of course um okay so we're actually back here okay uh, let's talk about how to get around the park you actually do need to to know this it's we mentioned it's not huge it's a small park and it's not overly crowded but the parking lots will fill up around the amphitheater. So you can drive into the park and anywhere you want in the park. Uh, it's really simple. There's just an amphitheater right there with parking right around it. And then there's that scenic drive that's 18 miles and it goes to the end of the park and then you have to turn around and come back. So there's only one entrance to the park. I mean, it's super simple, but the parking lots will fill up around the amphitheater by around eight or nine in the morning. So they do have a free shuttle that they've been running for over 20 years there. And the shuttle is nice because it goes from Bryce Canyon City, which is outside of the park, into the park to the amphitheater. It does not take you out on that 18 mile drive, but that's really never crowded. Um, so it just takes you right around the amphitheater and then into Bryce Canyon City. So it's actually super easy. All the parking is free in town and in the park. You can just park in town and hop right on the shuttle and take it into the park if you want. It runs about every 15 minutes and you do need to have your park entrance pass with you, you know, uh -huh. because, you know, an entrance to Bryce is $35 for the week. If you're hitting the surrounding parks, just get the $80 year long pass and then you don't need to worry about buying that pass every time you go to a new park. But the shuttle, I, I think we always think about those shuttles at Zion and what a nightmare those can be. But, That's a little bit different. Those oh, are more crowded. So different. Like, <laughs> yeah. Zion, I would say, stressful. Bryce, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And there's only one shuttle. There's no connecting lines. <laughs> so like Grand Canyon has different connecting lines you, that uh, you know you need to hop on and hop off. Bryce Canyon is super easy. Plus, they have a little a little web page you can pull up on your phone, and it'll show you when the next shuttle's coming. It actually tracks all of them by GPS. So, uh, oh, and then I mentioned. You can park in Bryce Canyon City, catch the shuttle in. But if you don't do that, you can pull, you can drive into the park and there's a big parking lot there. You can just park and catch the shuttle right there too. But not at the visitor center. Not the visitor center. It's actually across the street from the visitor center. So don't, the visitor center, they don't want you parking there all day. Just, just for an, an hour, hour or something like that. Yeah. Okay. You want to talk about when to visit? All right. When to visit. We were talking about this before we made the video and normally we have a recommendation, but with Bryce, we don't. Anytime. People, anytime. People, there's good and bad. Well, actually, it's, just, good. There, there's, it's, good. it's all good. Yeah. That's the thing. Some That's of the thing. parks we talk about, there's things we don't like, but I have, I have zero that I don't, that I, things that bug me about Bryce, I have no, nothing to complain about. Um, so we go in the summer usually because we have school age children and the summer is great. Even though there are crowds, they're manageable. And mm -hmm. And the temperature is nice. One thing I do want to mention about the weather, I want to talk about the weather at Bryce for just a minute, is because it's higher elevation, it's mountain country, it does rain. Um, it does rain in the summer. In fact, we got held on for a minute on our bike ride mm -hmm. in June. So Plus the mornings are cold. And the mornings are cold, yes. Mm -hmm. That crisp mountain air that we love so much, you yeah. get a little bit of that at Bryce, but it does heat up during the day. But other times people will say that they love to visit Bryce Canyon in February. They love, like the yeah. hoodoos are just strikingly beautiful with the snow on them. Mm -hmm. So you might so, want to put some spikes on your shoes so you don't slip on the ice. Yeah. But I mean, you can still go hike in there and see the beautiful hoodoos. So Cheryl's parents went to last year, I think, mm -hmm. and went during winter and just absolutely loved it. So that's kind of on my bucket list to go visit in winter. But as Cheryl mentioned, we have kids school-aged kids so we're always going in the summer <clears throat> and of course fall and spring will be nice so yeah yeah it so, really doesn't get all that it doesn't get too hot in the summer either so but i would say though if you are trying to do that as part of a loop yeah you'd, it's gonna you'd be... want you'd want to consider what it's like at grand canyon zion the other parks you're going to because some okay. of those places can get super hot and super crowded 
Yes. Okay. So let's talk about how many days to visit or how long you should visit the park for. So you could actually just kind of drive into the park, go up to the amphitheater, take a look at the rim, turn around and go. Yeah. <laughs> you can I spend like 30 minutes at the park if you actually wanted to. I give that approach a thumbs down. Yeah. that would You're be... missing a lot if that's all you do, especially if Definitely. you drive four hours out there. I bring that up though, because I think there are people that do that on their way from one place to another. And they're just like, let me go peek at it. Um, and, and that'll be stunning if you do that, but you need to spend, I would say at least a day there. Now, the last time we went this year, and usually when we go, we'll go for like three days or something like that. Yeah. And we'll do some other activities, um, and kind of break up our, our hikes and our sightseeing in the park with, uh, some other stuff going on. But, but, um, as we mentioned, there's just so much to do around there and you, you really must get inside. You have to hike down in there. Yeah. So. Yeah. I say, I say two days. That's my recommendation. Two days at Bryce. Mm -hmm. Two yeah. days at Bryce. But I think that a lot of that includes doing some surrounding activities yes. around like the Grand Staircase or Red Canyon or, some, or just adventure. Yeah. Or... Just some fun stuff. So that's our suggestion there. Um, okay. There are six major hikes in the park. So let me just briefly run through them with you in case you're kind of wondering what hike you should do. Um, technically the rim trail is a hike, I guess. So this is just, uh, again, goes along the top of the Canyon where you look down into the hoodoos and it goes for about five and a half miles, I believe, but you can just kind of walk as much of it as you want. There's little shuttle stops all over so you can walk parts of it and catch a shuttle. Um, and the rim trail is nothing to poo poo. Like it's pretty. Yeah. You actually want to do that. Yes. You want to walk along the rim to because the the viewpoints looking down in are are different and just dramatic they're crazy oh yeah i mean when you see a picture of bryce those pictures are taken from the rim yeah i guess i just i, I didn't mean to poo poo it but it's it's more like a walk not a hike right um and then the the most popular hike there is called the queen's garden slash navajo loop this uh, the name drives me crazy but it's actually a combination of two trails so the queen's garden is kind of a one-way trail going into the canyon and then it dead ends at, at the Navajo loop. And so this is actually a loop um, that gets back up to the rim. But anyway, that's why you'll hear that Queens Garden and Navajo loop trail. It's and that, combined. that trail actually does get a bit crowded. Oh yeah, that, uh, that one, that's by far the most popular. It's very popular. It's, you know, the, it's on sand, like packed sand. There's a little bit of unpacked sand, but it's mostly packed sand. Mm -hmm. The trails are, I don't know, maybe about as wide as this couch. Yeah, plenty wide, maybe wider. Yeah. In certain spots. Yes, and then you do, you hike in, you hike around through the hoodoos a little bit, and you climb back out. It's about three miles long. Yeah, three miles. Three miles. But, to, okay, it's, it's most popular for a reason. It really is, to me, the most most stunning hike there is. And there's water and restrooms at the top of that hike, so you don't, like, you can fill up there. There's water spigots and restrooms, so... Uh -huh. Always, always something on my mind. <laughs> I want to make sure that we are taken care of in that area. There's a couple of famous formations on that one. Uh, first is Wall Street, which is a, these switchbacks where you go down into the canyon. And then you'll see Thor's Hammer and then um, Queen Victoria. So that's why it's called the Queen's Garden Trail. It's named after this formation that uh, they say it looks like Queen Victoria. Uh, but that one has just great variety. It's really cool. And then... If, but if you want to get away from the crowds a little bit, try one of these other hikes. So there's one called the Peekaboo Loop, which is five, about five miles long. And that is also just going around the hoodoos down in the bottom of the canyon. Um, not quite as much variety as the Queen's Garden Trail, actually, but nothing to complain about. That it was a fa fantastic hike. So that was your favorite. No, no. Fairyland. Fairyland was my fave. The next one is Fairyland Loop. Fairyland was my very favorite trail that we did at Bryce Canyon. It's eight miles long. We'd get up early in the morning. I, I don't recall there being water stations and restrooms at the trailhead of this hike, and it's not a loop. You come out a different spot, right? Uh, it's five miles in the canyon and three miles along the rim of the canyon to get back to your starting point. Yes. And... And I loved it because, you know, you hike in there and you're with the hoodoos, but then you can see for a long ways where that trail is going. And you just felt like you were on an adventure, exploring a whole new area. It was really, really enjoyable. I have to say that we, we thought that that three mile rim trail 
was going to be easy and it wasn't it was it actually get snow basically. oh it was a it was a butt kicker it would have been too bad but it was at the end of doing five miles already yeah we were we um, were we were not sure if we should have tried to hike out to the road and catch the shuttle but we just followed our plan yeah so well actually that's one of the challenges of fairyland loop is the shuttle doesn't get it doesn't go to that point so uh Anyway, the ranger told me that was her favorite hike, and that really does, that has like the most wide open vistas and kind of makes, kind of feels like you're in the old west, really. Mm -hmm. um, okay, then let's talk about two more real quick. So at the very end of the Bryce Canyon Scenic Drive, so you drive 18 miles out to this place called Rainbow Point, and when you get there, there is a little one mile loop called the Bristlecone Loop, named after these bristlecone pine trees there that are these pine trees are about 2,000 years old. They're some of the oldest organisms in North America. Uh, so they're kind of interesting. There's these little scraggly trees. They're, they're, they're kind of interesting little trees, but uh, Br Bryce is known for the bristlecone pines. And then the last one is called the Mossy Cave Hike. This is just a real, like a half a mile hike, maybe. And it's not one actually way. inside of Bryce. It's outside of the park. Well, it's inside the park, but it's not. But you have to drive out of the uh, out of the park to get there. It's yes. really in a quirky little spot, and um, it gets pretty crowded during the day. So you need to hit that early or late, typically, because there's just a tiny parking lot there. I mean, but, it's like ten cars tops. It is yeah. not a big, and they have a little outhouse there, <laughs> and it's it's not what you would think of as a mossy cave. <laughs> you go up and you see this mossy grotto, I guess is more like it, right? <laughs> Describe a grotto. Most of us don't know what it is. Uh, just, a, just a whole, I don't know. It's just an overhang that has a little bit of moss. But that's not the That's not why you go to Mossy why you Cave. Go to Mossy Cave. It's got a waterfall. And that waterfall is interesting because it actually was a ditch carved by the pioneers to get water from Tropic Reservoir, which is up on top of the plateau, down to the city of Tropic down below. They actually carved this ditch to bring the water through this canyon, so it's kind of crazy. Um, so, you know, you can go play in the water there and uh, hang out by the waterfall, and that's a cool one. It's a real favorite for families. Mm -hmm. I would say if you have small children, that's what you've got to do. You know, but once again, I would not try going there in the middle of the day. Get up early or go there later in the evening, mm -hmm. and you'll get a parking spot. Okay, let's talk about another activity here. The horseback rides, I already mentioned this, but uh, you can ride a horse into Bryce Canyon. I mean, how cool is that? And it was one of my favorite things. So there's only one company that takes you into Bryce Canyon, and that is called Canyon Trail Rides. They also offer rides at Zion Canyon and at the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. And they are fantastic. So we've used them at the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. Mm -hmm. Cheryl did a mule ride there. And then I used them at Bryce Canyon, and they're awesome. So I, I say that because if you're, you know, you'll see the advertisements for horseback rides at Bryce Canyon, and they don't specifically say they don't go into Bryce Canyon, right? These other companies. There's only one that goes into the canyon. It doesn't mean the others are, are not good, though. A lot of them go to some really pretty places. As I mentioned, there's tons of pretty places around Bryce Canyon. And so there are some, some great trails like... Um, Thunder Mountain and Red Canyon are, are two of the places. So Ruby's Inn, as I mentioned earlier, they do horseback rides, but there are other companies that go to other places as well. So I've done a whole article on this as well that I'll link below. But, but again, if you want to actually go into Bryce Canyon, you've got to take that one company. All right. The next thing you can do is go for e-bike rides. This was such a fun adventure that I you know, when we were planning our trip, that was the one thing I really wanted to do, and I'm so glad we did it. Uh, there are miles of trails both inside and outside of the park. And so we rented our bikes for half a day, and I'm looking at, where did we go to? Red Canyon. No, what company? Oh, I think it was out of here e-bikes, but I'm oh, actually... Yes, you're right. We Now, there are other e-bike companies, but we used out of here e-bikes just because that's the one I found. And it worked really well. Now, a couple things to know about e-bike rentals. An e-bike is an electric bike, which means it has a motor on it. They're not difficult to ride, but they can go pretty fast, like up to 25 miles an hour. They have, they have pedal assist, so 
it will just, when you get to a hill, it just kind of takes over and zooms you up the hill. And there's even a throttle if you don't want to pedal, so you just kind of mm -hmm. push the power on. If you're under 12, you're not allowed to, not allowed to rent one. So they have, they have child seats and me and my sister-in-law laughed because we both had two children on the backs of our bikes. We call them the semis because they were really big, long bikes, but we covered over 30 miles in one day and saw some incredible scenery. We went to, what, to Red Rock Canyon and saw all of that, or not Red Rock, just yeah. Red. Oh, Red Canyon. Yeah, we went to Red Canyon and saw yeah. all of that. And then we turned around, passed out of here bikes, and then went up and did some of Bryce Canyon, actually went into the park for a little bit. And I wish I could have seen more. It was so neat to, to see all that nature and ride a bike and then not have to do the exertion of pedaling yourself all of that time. There's no way I could have ridden a, a bike for 30 miles. That... <laughs> With two kids on it that no, amount of time. So. No, yeah. Yeah, it was just a party. It's just fun. Mm -hmm. Just cruise around. So uh, as I mentioned, they do they do mountain bikes and e-bikes. Um, so I've got another article on that, actually, if you want to check that out. Uh, yeah, it, lots of options around there for that. And we really do believe that when you're doing a sightseeing place, like Bryce, it is good to throw an activity or two in there, especially if you have younger children or if you're staying for more than a day. Mm -hmm. um, because as incredible as Bryce Canyon is, it, yeah, I think you could maybe lose a little bit of appreciation if you spent the entire day looking over overlooks. Yeah. But, but when you add in a little bit of adventure, it really makes the trip memorable and fun. Yeah, we always like to get variety in our trips. And keep our kids uh, moving. Okay, and then finally, you can rent ATVs, four-wheelers. Um, you can't ride these into the park again, but there are trails all over the place. There are four companies nearby that rent these ATVs. So Ruby's Inn, as, as I mentioned, kind of the, the mainstay there at Bryce Canyon, but there are others that rent ATVs. And we actually didn't rent one because we brought our own. Uh, my dad brought his, so we, but we did cruise around on the trails and uh, there are beautiful places nearby. One of the real popular places is called Casto Canyon, but like a lot of these ATV companies, they'll give you guided tours. So if you're not really comfortable or you don't want to get lost or whatever, you can take a guided tour. Um, this is typically where you kind of ride in a line, you know, behind each other. Uh, or there are some where you can just rent them and head off into the trails on your own and go exploring. So, And they'll give you a pretty good map at Ruby's Inn. Ruby's Inn, there's trails all around Ruby's Inn. They'll give you maps there, but then there are trails over in other places as well. I was going to say, too, that they have the traditional four-wheelers where you straddle the seat and ride it. And then they have these what are called side-by-sides. They are like Polaris Rangers or Razors, something like that, where it's more like a mini Jeep that you're driving around where you're sitting side by side. Some of those will carry four people as well. They'll have a back seat. So there's lots of options for you. Um, I want to say they typically cost around. They were pricey. I think they were $400 a day around there. So one of them was 400 bucks for half a day. Oh. But if you had four people, that would make it a hundred dollars a person for that would all be able to ride in one. So the, I think the cost typically came out to about a hundred dollars a person, depending on the company that you went with. All right. So next we have what to pack for your trip. All right. So as we mentioned, the temperature can change quite a bit between morning and evening. So dress in layers. Definitely just in layers, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I have a jacket, I have a t-shirt, uh -huh. you know, I, I always feel like just a pair of pants, not jeans. I don't like to hike in jeans, but your, your stretchy pants or your hiking pants, um, those are, those will be good. Okay. We always say running shoes, no need to wear boots for hiking. This, these are just easy, <laughs> you know, easy walking trails. Um, with again, kind pretty of packed, flat terrain. Yeah, flat terrain, pretty packed sand. So running shoes and, are great. And not muddy. No, no. The climate is high and dry. So if you're not from around here, uh, you'll you'll probably dry out um, when you come to Southern Utah, Northern Arizona. So bring some lotion and chapstick. And moisturizer. Yeah. Sunscreen. Yeah, definitely. You know, one thing you don't really need, I hope I'm not wrong, 
but I've never experienced mosquitoes at Bryce Canyon. Yeah. Yeah, we, we didn't. I, That's I, interesting. It scares me to tell you to not bring mosquito repellent because I don't want to be wrong, but yeah. I've never seen a mosquito there. Yeah, that's a good point. We never really thought about it at Bryce or Zion, have we? No. Uh, I'm not sure about the Grand. I don't remember the Grand Canyon. But, um, yeah. Yeah, maybe that's not much of an issue. Cheryl mentioned bringing a poncho for rain gear. And uh, some people have difficulty breathing at the high altitudes like this. So just something to kind of keep or be aware of, maybe, that when you get... You know, they talk about these these sports teams when they come to the Rockies to play, like in Denver, you know, they're, they're high altitude and they run out of breath easier. So um, just something to think about there. Or then, altitude sickness. Sometimes people get that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then finally, we mentioned that it's a long ways away from anything there. So you'd want to bring like an audio book or something to listen to, to to pass the time as you go there. So that's one reason why we have made an audio guide for you. So I like to... Um, tell stories about these places. I like to research them, find the best stories, and tell them to people. And so we have made an audio guide for Bryce Canyon, and also it goes along with our itinerary for Bryce Canyon National Park. So think of this just like a self-guided tour, like we're giving you a tour of Bryce Canyon. What you can do with this itinerary here is it will tell you exactly where to go and when, and we'll walk you through each day what you'll be doing. And so let me just kind of give you an example here is, um, for example, this page will show you how to hike the Queens Garden Navajo Loop Trail and what to look out for, the different formations and how to find them. And tell you all the things you need to know about hiking that trail. And then the next page will instruct you to go where to go to, to listen to a ranger talk or to get lunch or um, like the next step on your activity that day, what you would be doing. Um, for example, this page gives you information about the scenic drive and tells you what the best overlooks are and kind of how to do the scenic drive and what to look out for. So this guide that, that uh, I've prepared is a multi-day Bryce Canyon guide. This is how to get the most out of Bryce Canyon. Um, there's a section on here about Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument that I mentioned. And this is a drive. Um, these are things that you would see along your drive here, things to look out for, things to stop at. And so we're real specific about um, where to stop. So at mile marker 68, you're gonna stop here and you're gonna look at this overlook. And so uh, we are basically trying to hold your hand and walk you through the whole process to get the most out of Bryce Canyon National Park. Yes, this isn't a travel book where you have to read through and piece together. This is just saying, hey, you're gonna get up at this time, you're gonna drive here, here's a map, here's where you park, here's what you're gonna see. It just it just takes all the stress out of planning your trip. I really hope you get it because then you can spend more time having fun and less time planning. That's always a big stressor for me when I go on a trip is worrying about uh, just all the little details, knowing how far apart things are. And, and in our guide, we've solved that for you. So you just follow the instructions and you'll have a great trip. Plus, Matt's stories are the most entertaining ever. Uh, doesn't Bryce have a bunch of Butch Cassidy stuff? Yes. <laughs> Ooh, so if you like Butch, Butch Cassidy, Cassidy and the be, Wild Bunch. Yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> in the audio tour as he came through this area, actually. Um, and so that's the other thing is while you're driving from, from one point to the next, uh, you'll listen to a chapter of my audio guide. Now, the chapters in the audio guide are typically around 15 minutes long. So they're not just kind of like a real brief, you know, tidbit. They're more like a story. You know, it's long enough to kind of get into a story and get out of it. Um, and so think of it like we are your, you, you're hiring us to be your private tour guide around in your vehicle, only much, much cheaper than hiring a private tour guide, but you're getting pretty much the same experience there. But either way, we are so grateful that you've watched our video and we do want you to have an amazing trip. Feel free to check out our other videos on Bryce to help prepare you. Also check out our website, we're in the It has articles about planning your trip. 
We would sure appreciate a like if you found this video helpful to help spread this to other people that are planning their trip. We just feel that everyone should get to travel to the West and see how beautiful it is. We appreciate you for staying with us, learning about Bryce, and we hope to see you in the parks. Take care.